Hello, and welcome to this video. When a system is excited by a sudden non-periodic excitation, transient vibrations will usually arise. Such oscillations occur at a system's natural frequencies, with the amplitude varying in a manner depending on the type of excitation. A baseball bat or a cricket bat striking a ball, non-destructive testing methods, even vibration measurement techniques, and the response of a building during an earthquake are all examples of transient vibrations. The mode superposition method is an efficient way to predict a structure's response to these types of loadings. It can be used to answer questions such as what will be the response's peak amplitude, when will it occur, and how long does it take for the response to decay. In this session, we'll look at how to solve such scenarios using mode superposition transient analysis with ANSYS Mechanical. We begin with a brief lecture, then proceed to a workshop example using a baseball bat with an impulsive load. Ready? Let's get started. In many practical situations, dynamic excitation is neither harmonic nor periodic. Such non-periodic excitations are often referred to as transient excitations that can vary arbitrarily with respect to time, and these must be solved in the time domain instead of the frequency domain. Simulating the transient response of a structure can be computationally expensive when solving the typical finite element matrices, also known as using the full method. The mode superposition method, on the other hand, is known as MSUP for short, and it provides a much more efficient approach. The MSUP method rearranges the equations of motion to modal coordinates, so the solver uses the natural frequencies and mode shapes from the modal analysis to calculate the response in the time domain. We end up with far fewer degrees of freedom, and the equations are uncoupled, so it becomes trivial for the solver to calculate the transient response. However, we do need to keep in mind some limitations, including the fact that any source of nonlinearities cannot be included. Constant time steps must be used, and the numerical accuracy is influenced by the number of modes we use. Typically, the ratio of effective mass to total mass should be greater than 0.9 in the modal solution to yield accurate results. Although the MSUP method is applicable to any type of loading with a typically short time history duration, we're going to use an impulse load for the purpose of this lesson to demonstrate its usage. Before learning about the impulse response, let's first briefly understand what an impulse load is. An impulse load can be considered as an excitation whose magnitude increases from zero to a very high value and reduces back to zero again within a very small interval of time. Now, in analyses involving short duration excitations like an impulse, a shock, an impact load, it is essential to begin with the time history of a quantity that describes a motion or force. It allows the inclusion of most of the typical types of loads like body acceleration, such as gravity, discrete forces, including a remote and nodal forces and moments, as well as distributed pressures. Since the solution is conducted in generalized coordinates, displacement and acceleration loads are valid only applied as base excitation at the support location. Inputs are excitations consisting of loads that are a function of time, and they can be defined as a constant over time, based upon closed form mathematical functions like trigonometric or algebraic to simulate let's say a half sine or sawtooth excitation, or the loads can even vary according to tabular data, which can be entered directly or even imported and copy and pasted. These values can be step applied, which means the value is applied at the first step and it jumps suddenly and stays constant for the rest of the analysis. For example, to account for the acceleration due to gravity, standard earth gravity is step applied or they can be ramped, which implies that the value applied at the first sub-step increases linearly at each sub-step, like a triangular waveform as input. Now let's get into our workshop model. For this workshop, we will use and simulate a hollow aluminum baseball bat being impacted by a ball. We won't model the ball impacting the bat, but rather we will specify an impulse load onto a small patch of surface on the bat. Now from literature, it can be found that the force time history is characterized by this half sine squared function and illustrated by this graph. The complete time of the impact is 70 to the minus four seconds or just under one millisecond. We assume a max force of 5,000 newtons 
although this could vary depending on the speed of the swing, among other variables. Our force equation is now 5,000 times sine squared of omega t, where omega is equal to the frequency times 2 pi, or 1 over the period times 2 pi. In this case, since our impulse is 1 half of a sine wave, then the period is actually 2 times 7e to the minus 4, or 1.4 milliseconds. The resulting equation is shown here. Now let's get started in ANSYS Mechanical. Drag and drop a modal system onto the project page. Right mouse click on the geometry and select baseballbat.scdoc. Double click on model cell to open mechanical. Change the units to millimeter, kilogram, newton, second. Click on the materials branch. Search for aluminum alloy. Pick the plus sign to add to the project. Click on the baseball bat in the tree and change the assignment to aluminum alloy. Highlight all four surfaces of the bat and specify a thickness of 2.5 millimeters. Click on the modal branch. Select the surface where the hands will hold the bat. Right mouse click and insert remote displacement. Confirm the behavior to be deformable. This allows the mesh to deform locally while enforcing the specified displacement on the face in an average sense. Specify zero for all degrees of freedom to hold the remote point of that remote displacement in all six degrees of freedom. Under analysis settings, change the max modes defined to 24. Recall that using too few modes for the transient analysis may result in some in inaccuracies due to mode truncation. Solve the model. Left click on the tabular data as shown. Right click and pick Create Mode Shape Results. Right click and evaluate all results. Now click on the first mode and animate the results to see the mode shape. Feel free to repeat this for the other modes to get a sense of the natural frequencies and mode shapes. Let's set up the M sub transient. In the Home tab, pick Analysis, then Transient Structural. In Initial Conditions, pick Modal. This tells Mechanical that the modal solution results will be used, which is a requirement for the M sub transient. In analysis settings, change the number of steps to two. This will enable some capabilities related to the duration of the loading that will be specified in a moment. For the first step, set the step end time to 0 0.0007. This coincides with the end time of the impulse loading. Set the time step size to 1e e to the minus 4 which is small enough to resolve the higher frequency transient response. And it's also small enough to properly apply the impulse load. If the time step's too large, the step will not capture the sharp peaks in the short duration transient impulse load, and the results will be inaccurate. Under damping control, specify a damping ratio of 2%. Now, change the current step number to 2. Set the step end time to 0.05. This will be the total duration of the transient simulation. Set the time step to 1e to the minus 4, again to be able to properly resolve the transient response. If the time step is too large, then we will end up with a sampling error, which is evident when a decaying sinusoidal response looks sharp and uneven. In the output controls, set nodal forces to yes. This will allow us to retrieve the reaction forces. Now let's apply our excitation, which is the force the ball imparts onto the bat as mentioned earlier. Right mouse click on transient, insert force. Pick the face on the bat for the geometry selection. This represents the location of the ball impact, and we have a specified assumption that the force is evenly distributed over that area. Change define by to component, change x direction to function. Confirm that the angular measure says radians. Since we'll be using a trigonometric function, its evaluation depends on the unit setting. And these can be changed by picking the region as shown. Now, specify the equation as shown here. The negative sign is needed for the proper sign of the loading. The graph of the loading shows a continuous sine squared wave, and we don't wish the loading to continue in the second load step. So left click on the graph for the second load step, then right click and pick Activate Deactivate at this step to toggle the load off. In details, change the number of segments from 200 to 1200. 
This will graphically improve the resolution of the time history, but it has no effect on the solution. Left click and highlight the start of the curve, then right click and pick zoom to range. Notice we now have the half sine squared wave in red in the first load step, but then it's deactivated in the second load step where it's shown dimmed. Let's solve the model. Insert deformation total, evaluate all results. Set the deformation scale to auto scale. Pick the results set icon to have the animation play with all the results. Play the animation. We can see how the bat vibrates following the simulated impact with the ball. Insert stress, equivalent stress. Evaluate all results. Now highlight the start of the curve. Right click and pick zoom to range. Notice the superposition of higher frequency content on top of the lower frequency response. Also notice from the graph the peak stress occurs around 5 milliseconds. Highlight the start of the curve again and play the animation. We may be interested in the reaction force where the bat's being held, so insert probe force reaction. Change boundary condition to remote displacement. Change axis to x axis. We can also repeat and look at the moment reaction, so insert probe moment reaction. Change boundary condition to the remote displacement. Change axis to y axis and evaluate all results. You may notice the reaction forces and moment magnitudes are quite high, but they're very short in their duration and they dissipate very quickly. If you've ever hit a baseball with a bat, you may have noticed the sting these high frequency vibrations can cause in your hands. I hope this video has clarified why employing the MSUP transient technique for calculating the transient vibrations of structures is computationally advantageous. We discussed how to specify transient loads in ANSYS Mechanical, and how to post-process the transient response. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching, and do check out our other courses to discover more useful learning resources.